Hey folks, Matt from Art of the Image.com. We've got Patrick writing in. Heading of this email is G85 versus A65. So he's looking at the Panasonic G85 versus the Sony A6500. Uh, so he says, Hey Matt, I'm going to be purchasing a 4K capable camera sometime within the next two months. And after watching your videos and reading other reviews, I'm down to picking between the Panasonic Lumix G85 and the Sony A6500. This will be my first 4K camera, which is why I've picked these two. I also like the fact these cameras have some sort of weather sealing, which is why I picked them over the A6300, uh, Fuji X-T20, and Canon M50. But I can live without the weather sealing. Both these cameras accommodate for most of the things I'm looking for, the only difference being the ergonomics. I will be using the camera for travel, film, and photography. And as for lenses, I will only be using a kit lens until I feel the need for a new lens, which won't be for a while. I was just wondering what your opinion is and what camera you think is best or if you have any other cameras you would recommend. Thanks for your help. Keep up the great work from Pat. Thanks for your question, Pat. Um, between those two, I will go with the G85. I do a lot of video work, and I like the G85 much better. I like the full-out var very angle LCD. I like the Panasonic app. I like the ability for the batteries to run longer for long periods of time on the G85 um, with no overheating issues. Uh, not running out of juice. Um, so for video for me, big, big advantage to the G85. Now that said, if I was doing a lot of vlogging style where I'm holding it in my hand and shooting it, Sony's a little smaller and lighter and it does have better follow focus, more like the Canon Dual Pixel AF. So if that's your style of shooting, if you want to do a lot of vlogging type thing where you need that Canon Dual Pixel AF style focus, then maybe you should look more at the A6500. I also don't like the Sonys as much because I don't like their lens lineup. I think you have to spend a lot of money to get into decent lenses. That is not the case with Nikon, Canon, or Panasonic. And again, advantages to those companies over the Sonys. Sony has some good lenses, but you got to move into the better, higher-end lenses to get the quality lenses. And I just, I'm, I'm not a big fan of their lenses. Um, so, G85 over the 6500 for me with the caveat that if you're doing a lot of vlogging, then perhaps that flips back to the 6500. Although if you're just doing a lot of vlogging, perhaps you want to look at, say, a Sony RX100 Mark V, which is great for that. Smaller and lighter, handheld, still does fantastic photography. The one-inch sensors have come a long way. That might be an option if you're seriously doing vlogging over the A6500. That's what I would probably get um, if I was just wanting a vlogging camera. I would either get the Panasonic LX10, which is another option, or the Sony RX100 Mark V. The RX100 Mark V is going to have better Canon Dual Pixel AF style autofocus, that smooth, fluid ability to follow you nicely in autofocus during video. Uh, but the LX10 is also very good, not quite as good for that that specific area, the Dual Pixel AF style autofocus. However, I, on, it, it still does a pretty good job. But it's also much less expensive, and for everything else, it's pretty, it's on par with the RX100 Mark V, and it's just probably almost half the price. Now, um, the the elephant in the room here is the M50, because I really like the M50, and I would th I think maybe you should look at that, depending on what you're doing. Um, I mean, the M50 gives you 4K, albeit with a fairly heavy crop and not being able to use the dual pixel AF. However, if you drop down to 1080, if you want to vlog. You got the Canon Dual Pixel AF, the, the, the Kleenex of, of the system. I mean, they coined that term. It's their branded name, and they're the ones that um, developed that system, and you know that was their claim to fame. Nobody touched it for quite a long time. So you get the Dual Pixel AF. You get a fantastic 24-megapixel APS-C sensor, essentially the same, same quality as you get in the ADD, say. Um, and you get the ability to shoot 4K for other things, uh, just I wouldn't use it for vlogging because you don't get that smooth uh, DPF autofocus. Uh, you get a small and light camera. You get access to the entire Canon lens arsenal, which is fantastic. You, get a, you can use the M adapter to get into all of it, or you just use the M lenses. Um, so I would seriously also look at the M50. So there's some options for you. Uh, it just depends on exactly what your needs are, how much video you're going to do, whether you're looking at doing vlogging style video, what you want to shoot. Let me throw it back to our viewers. What would you guys do in Pat's situation here? Would you go with um, a G85? Would you go with an A6500? Would you go with a Canon M50? What about the, the uh, 6300 or the Fuji X-T20? That's a great camera too. I didn't really get into that one, basically based on what I'm seeing as needs here. But uh, for travel film and photography, um, I'm leaning towards the M50 overall, to be honest with you. But uh, curious to see what you guys have to say. Let us know in the comments below. 
What would you do? What camera would you buy and why? Let's help out Pat. Always great to get your feedback. Help our viewers out when they have questions. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your question, Pat. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.